but will they come looking for you over there? How many hidden references did you catch in Disney's flick Luca? Disney notoriously includes smart and sneaky references throughout their films. Today, we're taking a look at some of our favorite hidden details from Disney movies. How does Luca connect to a future Disney film? Which memorable bird appears in Raya and the Last Dragon? Really? As we venture with Joe Gardner and 22 through the streets of New York and Seoul, a travel agency is seen with a poster advertising flights to Porto Rosso. This was a clever nod to the film Luca, which was one of the next Disney films to come out at the time. There is even more to the name Porto Rosso, though. It's actually a sneaky reference to the old Italian movie called Porco Rosso. The Porto Rosso Cup is about to begin! This cool scooter in Luca is way cooler when we take a look at the license plate. It may seem like some random numbers, but if we reverse them, we get 0225. What's so special about these numbers? Well, they make up the date of the day that the very first teaser trailer for Luca was released online, February 25th. Ah, yes! In the middle of the town, we see a newspaper stand, and if we look closely, we see the names of the newspapers, one of which is La Gazeta. If you ever wanted to get your hands on a real copy, you're actually in luck. La Gazeta is a real Italian sports newspaper. Bravo, we did it! Luca had quite a few references and one very special connection to Disney's The Little Mermaid. In this scene, Luca's mother warns him not to get too close to the surface of the water because he could be harmed by the humans. Sound like a familiar warning? It's extremely similar to the one that King Triton gives Ariel in The Little Mermaid. Alberto's collection of objects from the surface is very much like the Disney mermaid as well. Our favorite connection between the two movies, though, is that Jacob Tremblay, the voice of Luca, will actually be playing Flounder in The Little Mermaid remake. Wait, it feels like it's still there. Yeah, that's called Phantom Tail. You'll get used to it. In the town of Porto Rosso, there are colorful walls everywhere, and one very special hidden detail referencing another Disney Pixar underwater character. In this scene, we can see that the etching in the concrete is none other than Hank the Octopus from Finding Dory. You don't remember what we were talking about? Mm -mm. Julia's fisherman father has a striking look, and it's a bit of a different style to the rest of the character designs we see throughout the film. If he looks familiar to Disney fans, it's because he looks almost identical to the father in the Disney short La Luna. This is definitely no coincidence, since Luca's director, Enrico Casarosa, also happens to be the writer and director of La Luna. This is how I came into the world. Honestly, we were a bit startled seeing this chicken with a coconut shell on its head being sold by a food vendor in a market in Raya and the Last Dragon. That bird is unmistakable. There's no doubt it's Hey Hey, Moana's chicken sidekick. Hey Hey? It wouldn't be a Disney movie without a hidden reference to one of the many items that frequently reappears throughout Disney Pixar movies. In the Hall of Everything in Seoul, we're treated to loads of hidden details, including the classic Pizza Planet truck. Its first appearance actually goes all the way back to Toy Story. Welcome to Pizza Planet. In Raya and the Last Dragon, we know that Tong had a child who turned to stone, but fortunately, we see Tong reunited with the child at the end. The little one is never actually given a name, but reportedly, Tongler was what the child was referred to as by the animators. What's extra special about this name is that at the very end of the movie credits in the production baby section, we see the name Tongler listed among them. It's a name. Cruising through the New York subway system in Seoul, we see an advert for a company called Brang that appears. Any guesses where this company has been seen before? Taking a look back to the movie Inside Out, it's the same name of the company that Riley's dad works for. He's even wearing their shirt here. We get it. You're the best. Thanks, hon. We're used to seeing the Luxo ball appearing, bright as can be, in the background of some of our favorite Disney Pixar movies, which is why we had a harder time spotting it in Seoul. However, if we look closely, tucked under a table in 22's room, we can see the familiar ball, looking far more faded and shadowy than we've ever seen it. Not to mention Luxo Jr.'s quick cameo shining down on a soul. Wait, are you actually helping me? In the movie Onward, we see a collection of records, including one prominently featuring an artist named Dorothea Williams. 
This was an early hidden detail hinting at the movie Soul, in which, of course, Dorothea is the famous jazz musician Joe is so thrilled to play with. Call me Joe, Dorothea. I, I mean, uh, Miss Williams. Uh, it's a pleasure. Back in the Soul subway, Joe and 22 end up hopping on train number 2319. This specific number has in fact appeared in a Disney Pixar movie before. Many, many years ago when Monsters, Inc. came out, this same number was actually used as the code at the Child Detective Agency to alert when a human ended up in their monster world. George and I are like brothers. <laughs> 2319! This number being included is extra special because Monsters, Inc. was actually the very first film that Soul director Pete Docter had directed for Disney Pixar. Catch! During the song Shiny, Maui ends up dancing on a pile of beautiful gold that is very, very shiny. One item in particular stands out though, a very familiar magical lamp. If we look closely, we can see that it's definitely the genie's lamp from Aladdin. We've all been hearing Joe Ratzenberg's voice for years, even if we didn't actually know it. He's voiced a character in every single Disney Pixar movie since Toy Story. Soul was the first exception, but his streak managed to be kept intact. In the subway when Joe and 22 are running through, we pass a man who is a bit of a younger Ratzenberg's likeness, keeping his epic legacy and streak alive. Hey, very good, Woody. That's using the old noodle. It's a small and often missed detail, but these Chinese food boxes have appeared throughout some of our favorite Disney movies. Originally featured in A Bug's Life, we've also seen it in The Incredibles 2, where they were sitting eating away. They weren't the only family to enjoy it, though. Riley's family had the same boxes in Inside Out. We catch a glimpse of the classic box in Margaret's fridge in Toy Story 4, and then again in Seoul on an office worker's desk. The Toy Story 4 carnival is full of color and exciting prizes. But the one that really caught our eye was this beautifully designed guitar. The special instrument is unquestionably the same one played in the film Coco. Get him. Oh, get him. Uh, Bunny, what are you doing? The antique shop in Toy Story 4 is filled with fun and random objects. Looking outside the shop, we can see a plate hanging in the window with an intricate emblem on it. This special design just so happens to be Merida's family emblem from Brave. Once we actually get into the antique shop, we also sneak a peek at this collection of Wally souvenir cups. You can't be serious. Anyone remember this tune? We can definitely understand why the jingle for Triple Dent Gum starts to drive Riley crazy in Inside Out. The gum makes a few other appearances, though. A pixie duster buys a pack of gum in Onward, and in Cars 3, Triple Dent happens to be a sponsor of one of the cars. See? As a little Riley bounces on the couch, our eyes are drawn to the magazine on the coffee table. Our guess is that it's a cooking or food magazine, since there's a familiar face on the cover. Looks like Colette Tatou, the cook from Ratatouille, has been doing pretty well for herself. I ate false modesty. It's just another way to lie. Imagination Land has so many little gems, but we're taking a look at one of the board games with a little nod to an older Disney Pixar flick, Finding Nemo. This game called Find Me displays an image of none other than Nemo, the fish who wound up being found. During the songs of Moana, we get treated to such vibrant images and beautiful illustrations. During Maui's song, You're Welcome, a small fish swims across the screen, and if we take a good look, it's obvious that it's Flounder from The Little Mermaid. Whoa! Oh, and then we were safe. Disney has been known to include some darker and not necessarily for kids hidden details, and this reference is one of them. As Moana is packing her boat, a very familiar looking carrot and branch are packed away. These are two very key parts that make up Olaf, our favorite snowman. We can't imagine he'd do too well in that heat. Best day of my life, and quite possibly the last. The genie lamp wasn't the only Aladdin reference in Moana. Here, we see a carpet that's been well loved and definitely faded by the sun. This isn't just any carpet though. It's the flying carpet Aladdin and Jasmine ride through the air on. When Judy Hopps' adventures in Zootopia bring us through Tundra Town, a tiny pair of elephants makes us do a double take. Taking a closer look, we can see that these two little elephants are actually dressed up to look just like Anna and Elsa. I'm going to see 
My sister! We love finding all the little references to past Disney movies and real-life places and people, especially the ones that hint to future productions. It's great to see the little tributes to all those inside the Disney family as well. Which hidden detail did you think was best placed?